Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 4F where we're going to talk about a particular example of a genetic problem caused by an allele on the X chromosome and that's the color vision defect called red-green color blindness. We'll talk about how genes control color vision and then about the particular genes for color vision that are on the X chromosome and how their evolutionary history makes them particularly prone to mutations that create color vision defects. And we'll end by considering what's the phenotype of women who are heterozygous for these defects. So on the right is a diagram I've made showing the retina. And it's got little green dots, red, green, and blue, to represent the light colored light sensing cells on our retina the cells called the cones there's actually about four million of these cells on the retina i've only shown a few hundred and they differ in which of our three visual pigments each cell expresses some of them express a blue pigment and they're maximally sensitive to light in the blue wavelength the others express either a green pigment or a red light sensitive pigment and that gives the red and green cells slightly different very overlapping but still distinguishable differences in their sensitivity of different wavelengths of light the nerve signals that these cells send to our brain are what our brain interprets as measures of the wavelengths of light that are hitting our retina and thus is how we see color now the genes that I want to talk about are the genes on the X chromosome, the genes for the red and the green pigments. These genes are side by side, very close together on the X chromosome. And they're together in part because they result from an ancient gene duplication. Um, this duplication occurred early in the primates, um, of which we're, of course, a member. Um, other animals generally do not have red and green pigments. They only have two visual pigments. We have three because of this gene duplication. And these two genes have, are a, a gene family, as we described in earlier lectures, and their specificities have diverged after the gene duplication, just as we described earlier. One is more sensitive to longer wavelengths, that's the red one, one is more sensitive to shorter wavelengths, that's the green one. Now, these have different specificities, but the DNA sequences are still quite similar. They're obviously homologous genes. And this sequence similarity increases the frequency of particular kinds of mutations. Mutations that take the red and the green genes and either recombine them in um, meiotic crossing over, which we'll talk about in module 7, or by errors that DNA polymerase mistake makes, such that mutant alleles arise that have only a single opsin gene instead of two. This gene can either be the green version or the red version or some hybrid of the two versions. It doesn't make a big difference because the sensitivities of these two um, pigments are quite close. But what really matters is that now there's only one pigment sensitivity because there's only one opsin gene. And this means that the eye can't tell red from green. So the con these, as I said, these mutations are quite common. And here's the frequency of mutant alleles in different populations have been measured. So in Caucasians, 8% of the X chromosomes have a red-green minus allele. It could be a hybrid allele, all red or all green, but they only have one pigment where the normal allele has two. The numbers are slightly less in other cultures. 5% of Asians, 4% of African X chromosomes have the defect of um, red-green alleles. And this means that 8% 8% of Caucasian men are red-green colorblind. Because 
they only have one X chromosome, and that X chromosome, by bad luck, happened to be one of the ones that only has a single opsin gene on it. Similarly, 5% of Asians and 4% of Africans are males are colorblind. Now, now I have to apologize for something I've done in this lecture, which that is that I've used the colors red and green to make an important distinction. Because students, male students, are very often colorblind, instructors learn not to use distinctions between red and green to make important points in their teaching because so many of their students won't be able to see the difference. So for those of you who are colorblind, I'll just label these. This is the red allele. This is the green allele. Now, what about women who are heterozygous for the red-green colorblindness allele. So they've got one normal copy of the X chromosome and one copy with the defective allele with only a single opsin gene. Now we talked earlier about the effect of X inactivation on phenotypes in women um, and explained that in general ev women, even though one X chromosome is inactivated, women care heterozygous for X chromosome mutations usually don't display a mutant phenotype, largely because most of the functions of genes on the X chromosomes are such are functions that can be shared between different cells, so that as long as half of the cells in the body are expressing the normal allele, the phenotype will be normal. Now that's not true for um, the opsin genes because they're what's called cell autonomous. Individual cone cells express the allele that they have in their genome, allele or alleles. So women who are heterozygous for red-green color blindness alleles have not quite perfect color vision. And that's because patches of their retina will express only a sing only two colors, the blue um, opsin and in this case the red opsin, but no green opsin. And these will be patches of cells where X inactivation leaves this chromosome active and inactivates this chromosome. Other patches of the retina will express normal red, green, and blue cones because they've kept this allele active. Um, these women, as I said, have almost perfect color vision. The deficiency is detectable really only in low light when it gets hard to distinguish colors anyway. So what we've done, we've talked about how, what causes red-green color blindness, that it's caused by deletions that are particularly common because the red-green opsin genes are close together and have very similar sequences because they arose from a recent duplication. Men who carry these alleles are red-green colorblind. Their eyes are only sending two color signals to the brain and they can't tell red from green. And women who have one of these deletions have almost perfect color vision. Of course, women who are homozygous for a red-green deletion are going to have the same phenotype as men who are hemizygous. They will be red-green colorblind. Coming up next, we're going to shift gears from talking about the sex chromosomes to thinking about gene interactions in biochemical pathways. We'll start with simple biochemical pathways and how gene interactions affect the phenotypes caused by different mutants. I hope to see you there.